All right, hello everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and join us for the presentation today. We're gonna talk all about digital game-based learning and what we do here at Prodigy. Really excited and really grateful that you are spending time with us. So my name is Dr. Josh. I work at Prodigy. I've been at Prodigy for four and a half years. My degree is in educational leadership. Before I joined Prodigy, I was an administrator and before that a teacher at the school district of Palm Beach County down in Florida. So really thrilled to be here with you at NCTM. And I'm really excited to be joined by Stephanie Pace. Stephanie is a teacher from Ohio. Shout out to all the Mad River peeps. <laughs> and I will turn it over to you to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Stephanie Pace. Um, I teach at the Mad River Local Schools District. It's right outside Dayton, Ohio. And I'm really excited to be here with you guys and talk about actually using Prodigy in your classrooms. Awesome, thanks, Stephanie. So. Here's a look at our agenda for today. I'm gonna to do a quick poll in a minute. I'm gonna run through a demo for those of you who aren't familiar with the product. Uh, talk a little bit about who we are, what we believe in, and why we do what we do. And Stephanie's then gonna run through some use cases. She, as she mentioned, is gonna talk through how she uses Prodigy in her classroom. And hopefully you can come back with some new use cases that'll get your students even more excited about their time on Prodigy and help you get even more value out of the data that's available for you. And then we will have time for Q and A. All right, so let's dig a little deeper into Prodigy Math. I'm gonna switch my screen over to a quick demo and talk you through how it looks. There have been some updates over the last little while. So here's the student experience. If you haven't seen it in the last little bit, we have updated our graphics. We've updated how the battle works. Students still have their own avatar character. They still engage in math battles, but you'll see there are different kinds of spells that they can use. And now, once they jump into the battle, they're into the math question, and here's the question interface. They've got those digital manipulatives there. We have the hint bubble available for them. If they need it, there is a text-to-speech version for the hint bubble. There's also text-to-speech at the top left, so if the students need it read to them, that's available. We have the other digital manipulatives, as you saw really briefly. We've got counters, base 10 blocks, fraction strips, all kinds of things that can help students as they're working through the questions. When they enter their answer, they get it right, they click the get magic piece, and then they're able to cast their spell and continue on in the game. And as you've probably seen in your classroom, students get really excited. They love their characters, they love advancing in the game, but there's some really important data available for you on the back end that I'll talk through really briefly, starting with the placement test. So the placement test happens automatically twice a year. You don't have to do anything. It happens in September, and it happens again in January. If you're a new Prodigy user, it'll start whenever you start using it. If you've got a colleague who's new to it and they're jumping in, you can see back up at the top that it shows you where students are, if they're at grade level, above grade level, or below grade level for the various domains. So this is a really nice complement to the diagno diagnostics you probably already do. It's a great reference point to be able to take a look at and see how your students are doing. Then we get into assessments. There's three different pieces. There's plans, which use standards. There are skills, which are broken down further. And then there's test prep. So this is how you assign skills so that the math the students see in the game matches exactly what you're teaching, which is super powerful. So you can pick from the skill that you want. You can pick the number of questions that they're gonna see. You can assign it to either the whole class or a few students. So if you need some reinforcement for a few students, you can do that. And then as they're playing, the report will populate in real time with red and green boxes. Green being they got a question right, red being they got it wrong. So imagine your big long class list and you can see immediately who you need to pull over and have some intervention time with. So the rest of the class can keep playing. They can move to general algorithm play since it is adaptive and it'll move them through the grade level content if they finish the assessment that you've created for them. And that's a very, very brief overview of how the product works. All right, so here's a little bit of background on who we are and, and what we believe in at Prodigy. Our mission is to help every student in the world love learning, and it's really near and dear to my heart. We believe that students should really enjoy the content that they're learning, have fun doing it, and that's reflected not only in the game that we offer, but some of the um, theoretical framework behind how it's built. And that includes our business model too. So in the last year, 
Nearly 50 million students use Prodigy at absolutely no cost. So as I mentioned, I was an educator before I joined Prodigy, and it's this reason why I joined and moved from Miami to Toronto, where the weather is much different. Um, so if you're not familiar with the business model, there are optional parent memberships available where if they purchase a membership, they're able to unlock additional game features for their child, and that's great. It allows us to keep all of the educational content free, the student experience free, the teacher dashboard, no cost, and that really is a special and unique way that we're able to impact education at scale. I also want to mention we do take privacy and security really seriously. We are FERPA compliant, CPSC compliant, and COPA compliant as well. Now, I want to talk briefly about motivation first. That's our philosophy of education, and it underpins why we do the things we do. And this quote from Zach M., who I got to meet, really speaks to me. He said, the reason Prodigy is so great is because it gives students a tool that makes math fun for them and encourages them to try harder, which builds their motivation. And it speaks to the two different elements that we have in the game. We want them to have fun as they're learning and they're playing, and they want to advance in the game, and that's great but we also want them to feel really good about their ability to do math. And I see that at my own home with my children. I've got three. I've got a seven-year-old who's in second grade and identical twins who are five. And as they're playing the game, I think about Jack specifically. He's the oldest. And when I hear him say, like, Dad, I'm so good at math, it like warms my heart, and I'll tell you why. I was a student that struggled in math. I was an English teacher when I was a teacher because math did not come easily to me. And I'm super cognizant that we're here at NCTM. We're surrounded by math educators who have a deep passion for math, and I'm so happy that you have that. And I want to make sure that all students feel like they can do math, like they belong, like they're good at math. And I think Prodigy is a great way to help students get to feeling like they can do it and that they belong in the math world because it unlocks so many incredible possibilities for them in their life. Now, really briefly, I want to cover some results from a study that we did. This is a uh, correlational study when we looked at California and students who use Prodigy somewhat, some who used it a lot, and some who didn't use it at all. And you can see that there's uh, a, a quite a stark difference between those who used it even a little bit compared to the control group of students who didn't. So excited to see that correlation that as students are playing, they're practicing, they're working on their math, we can see the more they use Prodigy, the stronger their achievement was. So it, it really correlates nicely, and we were excited to have those findings. And I'm really excited to have Stephanie come and take the mic. She's, again, a real teacher. She's going to talk about how things work in her classroom and walk you through how she uses Prodigy. So Stephanie, over to you. Thank you. So, yep, I'm a regular teacher in the classroom, and I'm just really excited to be here talking to you about how I'm actually using Prodigy. What does it really look and feel like? So one thing, just to sort of make sure you're in the right sort of mindset shift, is I will say that Prodigy is a tool best used to review skills that you've already taught or to actively practice things. It's not really something that I use to teach a new concept. Sometimes I'll use it to front load if I think I want students just exposed to something, but for the most part, I'm using it to go over concepts we've talked about, or I'm using it to spiral review. So my first tip is using Prodigy Math for individual support. So when I am running an assessment, I will come up to my teacher page, and this is something if you've not been utilizing, I know sometimes Teachers are using Prodigy, but we're kind of using it like it's the wild, wild west where kids are on it, things are happening. They're occupied, they're having a blast, but we don't know what they're really up to. So this is a way to sort of dial in on what's actually happening. So I can look here, I can look at my data, and I can see that you know student R and W are looking like they need a little bit more support in this area. I also really like that I can quickly uh, organize them based on their uh, success rate. So you can uh, alphabetize it or go by if they're struggling. I'm not gonna sit through and individually analyze every single student. I need to see quickly who's got it, who needs some practice, who's really lost. And so that's something that's really helpful to me. So I looked there and I said, okay, these students need a little bit more support. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna give them a targeted instruction. So 
With your assignments, you do not have to assign it to every kid in your class. If you only have these three or four who are needing this additional practice, you can just assign it to them and go back and check with how they are doing. However, the whole class is still engaged with the same application. You're not having to make, okay, I need four copies of this, three copies of this, this kid needs this special one, this kid might need this or might need this. I can go in at the start of my week, I can preload this, I can decide when to assign it, and it's already ready to go, and the whole class doesn't know they're doing anything different. That also works for extension assignments. If I have a student who is more ready, they're ready to tackle long division, they're needing something new, they're ready to move on to the next challenge, I'm able to have them still engaging and working with the rest of the class, but they're working on something that they're a little bit more ready for, and I think that's really awesome that we're all working together where we need to be. Uh, number two, I love the teacher features because I'm trying to save time, I'm trying to work effectively, I'm trying to work smarter and not harder. So I love that I can align the practice my kids are doing to the standards. I know sometimes teachers aren't aware that they can do this, but if I'm working on fractions, I'm gonna go through and select the fraction components that we're going over that week for my students to practice. It's also nice because I can make sure they're not getting something that we haven't gone over yet, so they're not gonna be frustrated or like, Miss Pace, I've never seen this, I don't know what you're talking about. I've gone in, I've decided what uh, standards I want them reviewing and practicing so that they're able to have success and they're able to use it a little more purposefully. I also love it for spiral review. I know a lot of times we're not seeing that as much built into our regular curriculum. This is a way that I'm able to do it in a really fun way, but also I can say, oh, we taught graphs in August and now it is April and we do not remember them at all. So it's a really helpful way to keep circling back. And my favorite one, I'm a teacher in Ohio, I'm a third grade teacher, we have high stakes testing. We use the air test and Prodigy has air prep ready to go. They have other standardized tests as well. This is a lifesaver when you're trying to get everything ready. You know you need them reviewing everything from the year, but I'm not trying to go through and create my own individual assignment with every single topic in third grade. Up here, so you can see when I go to um, different things that I want to assign, I can do a plan, an assignment, or a air prep. If I selected air prep, this is my actual screen grab from last year, my class and their work. I can look here and I can see, okay, question 12 through everyone for a loop. I need to go back and see, okay, what question was that? Why are we having such a hard time? I need to go back and more explicitly teach this. I can also see, okay, question 13, for the most part, we're all really successful with that. I don't need to go back and review that concept. And over to the side, I had some example questions. So I have question seven up there and number 13, 13 they did great on. I don't need to go back to that. However, I'm looking at question seven and I'm thinking, okay, they had to make the array and they had to answer for the total number. That's two components of a question, and sometimes it's not that our kids don't know how to answer it or don't know how to solve the math. They don't know how to work the computer program. They don't know how to manipulate whatever they're supposed to manipulate on these high stakes tests, and getting practice with these different types of digital manipulatives or showing their answer with these different tools is really great practice because sometimes it's not even practicing the math it's practicing how to use online tools to take a test to show what you know. So I really like using the uh, test prep for that purpose. It also gives you real-time data. This is not my data from that year. This was just some sample data that I had pulled. But you can go through and see by student or by your whole class or each of your classes, what areas do we need more focus on? Where do I need to focus my time? What areas are we really successful in? And I don't need to spend as much of our class time on that. And I think that's really helpful. This is updating as you refresh your teacher page. So it's really helpful to have that in the exact moment data. Um, it's really also exciting that Prodigy does empower our students with a lot of these digital manipulatives. Um, there are instructional videos that they are able to access. And also what I really love in my classroom is the access to these digital tools. The caveat with this is they don't have every single tool that we have saw all at once. If a subject or a question is gonna require this type of tool, then it's gonna be made available to them. 
However, you're not gonna see fraction strips on an addition question because we all know if I put every single math manipulative out on the table, your class is gonna play with any math manipulative you put on the table. Doesn't matter if it's digital or tactile in the real world. So they have the manipulatives that are gonna make the most sense. And again, they're working with those different things that they might not have seen before. I know especially my students in our community, they're not playing games with these types of components. They're not used to working in this way. And I wanna make sure I'm giving them access to this, no matter what they've seen at home or not seen before. I will say probably my favorite part of using Prodigy is using it to build community. So I do that in a couple different ways. The first one is something we uh, call the Prodigy Jam in my room. It's a very exciting. It's also a really good motivator to finish an activity and transition because we won't have time if we can't finish this up and transition. So we'll do something we call the Prodigy Jam. That's where everyone in the room is playing Prodigy. Our volume is up, our headphones are off, we're talking with our friends, we're working at tables, and it's really exciting and it's a fun community time where we're playing, we're answering questions. Students might be supporting other students, but it's really a moment where while they're playing the game online, they're also playing it actively with each other. Another uh, favorite of my class is Find the Teacher. As the teacher, you can play and be in the world of Prodigy with your students. It's extremely motivating for them to try to find you and be the one to battle you and you have it up on your screen so everyone's still seeing the math. It's a beautiful time to do your own think aloud and say, hmm, I'm seeing this, I'm gonna try this. How could I check my work? It's very fun. And so that's something that they find extremely exciting that we all do together. And then I'll do a little leaderboard shout out midway through the week and I'll say, oh my goodness, these three friends are currently on the leaderboard for the most correct answered questions. Who's gonna catch them? Are they gonna be the reigning champs for the week? And sometimes there'll be some sort of prize with that. Sometimes it's just a shout out in the classroom, but the moment I mention that there are friends who are top of the leaderboard, we are all of the sudden very motivated to answer those questions. I know sometimes it can come up, well, they're just playing this game. What are they actually doing? When does the math come in? And something with that that I find really helpful is a tool called focus mode, which as a teacher, you can check a little box and they are just doing the math. They're in a place called Tower Town and it is a focused instructional time. And a lot of times I will say, okay, we are trying to climb the leaderboard. We are working hard and we are focused in this time. We are all gonna be working in this way. And that is something that's really effective for really making sure we're amping up the math that they're doing. Because we know every student's gonna find many exciting things to do. And that's a way to give them a little helpful redirection. Uh, finally, I really do like it for a spiral review and ongoing practice. Um, we talked briefly about having an assignment and a plan. So here, if I'm doing an assignment, I'm gonna select my skills. And this does not have to be skills that go together. Maybe I know, okay, I need to hit some geometry concepts. I know I need to review some division facts. And ooh, we haven't done subtraction with regrouping in a while. I wanna just hit a couple of those and see where we still are. So I can go through and select what skills I want my kids to be working on. I select my number of questions. For example, I, this here I grabbed where I just had done all of the same amount, but if you know there's a type of problem they just need more practice with, you can change that to a higher number, or if you just wanna do one and then move on to a different type of problem, you can change the number of questions you have on each topic. And then a little bit differently is a plan, and that is assess, like having them practice and work within one standard. What I will typically do is I will set a plan for like two weeks because I know I'm gonna be doing the same concept and I'm either gonna set a plan for the standard I'm currently teaching or whatever I just got done teaching so they're getting that review. That way when my students finish their assignment, it'll automatically move them on to the plan. So they're still doing what I want them practicing. They're working on the skills that I need them working within so that we're gonna be ready and for fourth grade, for life, and also for the standardized test because we have to be ready for all of those things. All right. Well, I wanna thank all of you for the incredible work that you do, you're absolute heroes. Thank you for helping students love math. So thank you for coming to NCTM. Thank you for coming to our session and looking forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks everybody. <laughs>